Welcome back to another very exciting tutorial here at the PhotoshopTrainingChannel.com. My name is Jesus Ramirez, and you can find me on Twitter at JRFromPTC. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a realistic coin in Photoshop from scratch. We're going to start out with a basic vector shape, and we're going to simply apply multiple layer styles that are going to help give our coin shape and dimension. I'm also going to show you how to create text that's going to wrap perfectly around the coin. Then I'm going to show you how to create an embossed look from a photograph. Also, before we get started, I want to point out that I have a new Instagram account. You can follow me at JR from PTC. Okay, let's get started with a tutorial. The first thing we're going to do is create the document that we're going to be working on. I'm going to go to File, New, and I'm going to create a document that's a thousand pixels wide by a thousand pixels tall. The background for that document is going to be a dark gray. Then we're going to create guides to help us create our coin shape. So I'm going to click on the ruler here, click and drag that guide to the center of the canvas, and it should snap right in the center. So make sure that you have snap enabled. Also, if you don't see your rulers, you can press Control R, Command R on the Mac, or you can go into View and make sure that rulers has a check mark and that will enable it or disable it. Now create a horizontal guide and that should snap to the center. Then click on the ellipse tool and create a circle. Make sure that there is no stroke in the fill. We're going to use a light gray. So maybe this gray here, click in the center and drag. Also hold alt shift to create a perfect circle from the center. About that big minus 968. Then we're going to rename this layer to main shape. So what we're going to use this main shape for is to duplicate it and create other elements of the coin and to use it as a way to easily create layer masks. You'll see as we move on how we're going to use it. But for now, we're going to duplicate it. So I'm going to press Control J, Command J on the Mac. This is going to be the coin shape, which in reality is the same as the main shape. But I'm just giving them different names so I can easily tell what they are just by looking at the layers. I'm going to double click on the side of the layer here to bring up the layer style window and I'm going to add a gradient overlay. I'm going to click on the reset to default button just so we're working with the default settings and you can follow along. I'm going to leave the blend mode set to normal. I'm going to change the gradient to black and white and I'm going to change the angle to maybe about 127 as long as the light is coming on the top left here and maybe decrease the scale a little bit and click and drag this down. So this is what we have. Maybe even bring the opacity down just a little bit. So as long as you have your light source in the top left and the shadows on the bottom right, you should be okay. I'm also going to click on drop shadow and you can match the angles if you want, 127 degrees. I can do that here as well. So 127 and I can increase or decrease the distance of the shadow size and of course, opacity. Then press OK. I'm going to collapse the layer style so we have a little more room to work with. Then I'm going to add a new layer and we're going to add a texture. So I'm just going to rename this layer to texture. So we're going to add texture to our coin. You can fill this layer with whatever color you want. I'm going to fill it with black, which is my foreground color. Alt backspace, option backspace on the Mac to fill with your foreground color. Then make sure that black and white are your foreground colors by clicking on this icon here and going into filter, noise, add noise. 63% is good, Gaussian, monochromatic, press OK. Then go into filter, blur, and blur one more time just to give it a light blur. Then go into filter, stylize, emboss. And these are pretty good, 129 degrees for the angle height of three pixels, amount of 45, press OK. And I can then bring the opacity way down, maybe maybe somewhere around 7%. I'm going to zoom in just so you can see what we did there. So that's the texture that we added. I'm going to zoom out. And the reason we created this main shape is so it's always easy to find. And I can always have a place to control click, command click on the thumbnail icon here 
to load it as a selection and then I can easily create a layer mask on any layer I want with the shape of the coin. In this instance it was pretty easy but later on we're going to have a lot more layers and finding the coin layer may not be as easy. So in a project like this I always like to have a main shape that I can easily find, select and duplicate. So with the texture layer selected I'm going to hold shift and click on the coin shape then press Control G, Command G on the Mac to turn that into a group. And I'm going to call this Main Coin. Since this is going to be our main coin, everything else that we add is going to be built on top of this. Now we're going to add some decorations to our coins. So we're going to add an outer ring and then an inner ring. So let's start with the outer ring. I'm going to click on the main shape and press Control J, Command J on the Mac to duplicate. Click and drag this above all the other layers. And now we're going to cut a hole in this layer. So I'm going to click on the ellipse tool. I can come into the options bar and select subtract from shape or I can simply hold alt option on the Mac and when you see that minus sign you can click in the center, hold shift and create a circle that is going to cut a hole into that shape. So now you have to just determine how thick your outer ring is going to be. So for me I think that something like this will work. So now we have this outer ring. I can double click on the side of the layer here to bring the layer style window. Click on bevel and emboss. Click on contour. And I can increase and decrease the size of the bevel here. And I actually want a bevel going up, not down. And you know what? To make it easy, I'm just going to click on reset to default. And we'll work on it together. I'm going to increase the depth, size, maybe increase the opacity on both the highlight and shadows. And you know what, the height might have been too much. So let me bring that back a little bit to maybe five pixels. And maybe even bring this to 100% because I want the highlight to be very bright. And also increase the shadow. And you can change the range of the contour as well to whatever you think looks good for your image. So for me, maybe, maybe somewhere over here in the 80s. And I'm going to press OK now. But I'm going to show you what we're going to do with all the other layers. And I want to make it really obvious. So. I'm going to double click on the thumbnail of this layer to bring up the color picker because it's still a shape and I'm just going to change the color to red. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I can show you that the color really doesn't matter because we're going to bring down the fill all the way down to zero which is going to make the original pixels in this layer disappear and only keep the layer styles that we're applying. So I'm going to double click on the side of the layer here and you'll see that if I disable the bevel and emboss, this layer is invisible. The only pixels that are visible are the pixels that we apply by using the layer style. So that's how we're going to continue to build upon this coin. I'm just going to press OK. I'm going to double click on the name to rename it. I'm going to call this outer ring. I'm going to click on the main shape, press Control J, Command J on the Mac to duplicate. Click and drag it above the outer ring and I'm going to call this inner ring. I'm going to press Control T, Command T on the Mac to transform. Hold Shift, Alt, click and drag that inward somewhere around here. So we're going to have text going around the coin and then we're going to have this ornaments going around in this inner ring. So you got to determine the, the width of both the width of the area where you're going to keep your text and the width of this inner ring. So maybe somewhere around here for me. Then I'm going to press enter. Then I'm going to cut a hole like we did earlier. So I'm going to hold alt shift click and drag from the center and determine how thick that inner ring is going to be. So this is my inner ring and that seems to be a good size. If it's not for you, you can just make sure you have the entire layer selected, not just that inner ring I had selected a moment ago, and press Control T, hold Shift and Alt, and just scale it accordingly. But for me, that was a good size. So I'm just going to undo. And I'm going to keep the same layer style I had for the outer ring, and you can copy it very easily by holding Alt, Option on the Mac, clicking on that FX icon, and dragging it over to the new layer. Unfortunately, that doesn't copy the fill, so you have to click and drag that fill to 0%. If you want to make any adjustments to that, you can just double click on the FX icon. It brings up the layer style window, and then you can make any adjustments that you want to. 
I'm not going to make any adjustments now. I'm just going to continue working with this coin. Now we're going to work on the little ridges that go outside of this coin. I'm just going to click on something that is not a shape. So maybe here on this main coin, because I don't want to add or subtract from any of these shapes since I'm going to be using the polygonal tool. And by the way, before we go any further, some of you after watching this may be thinking all these steps will be a whole lot easier in Illustrator. And I just want to say that I do agree with you, but this is a Photoshop training channel and a lot of people who watch these tutorials either don't have Illustrator or don't know how to use it. So I decided to do all these steps in Photoshop. So with the polygonal tool selected, I'm going to go into the options bar here and make sure that I have star selected and indent sides by 99% and the number of sides is 50. Then I'm going to click here in the center and drag while holding shift and make sure that one of these lines here that I'm creating is going right through the center there, the horizontal center, then release. Notice this line here right in the center. Then I'm going to press control J, command J on the Mac to duplicate that layer, press control T to transform, hold shift, click and drag and notice a tooltip right on my cursor. When you get to 90 degrees, you can just release and you'll have lines cutting in between the lines you have there previously. So if I select both of these, you can see what that looks like. And actually, I'm going to press Control E, Command E on the Mac to merge them. And I'm also going to right click on them and choose Rasterize Layer. And I can double click on that layer and click on Stroke. And now you'll see what I'm creating. I want to have these lines going here along the edge. I'm going to also add a color overlay and use black as my foreground color because if you remember the shape was actually light gray so there might be a light faint gray line there that I don't want. Then I'm going to press OK and I'm going to right click on the layer again and choose rasterize layer style so it's all on the layer here. Then I can press Control J, Command J on the Mac to duplicate, then press Control T to transform, hold shift and rotate the layer until you find another in-between area, meaning the lines that are being created now are going to go in between the previous lines. So somewhere around here and just press enter. So now we have this effect here. I can press control E, command E on the Mac to merge that onto one layer. Then I can hold alt option on the Mac on this FX icon from the outer ring layer to duplicate it click and drag it onto the polygonal copy here. Then I'm going to click on the layer thumbnail here of the outer ring to make a selection out of it and click on the layer mask icon. And I'm actually going to click and drag this above the outer ring. So now we have this effect here. I'm going to click on the FX icon because right now these ridges are currently popping out. I want them to be embedded in. So I'm just going to click on the down button here. And I can bring down the opacity of the shadows and highlights if I want to. And I'm just going to bring it down a little bit. And I may actually just change the depth a little bit. So maybe something like that. And then press OK. I'm going to click on this layer and on the outer ring. I'm going to select both of these layers and then press Control G, Command G in the Mac to put them into a group. And I can call this group outer ring. Now we're going to work with the inner ring. We're going to add little tiny circles going around the entire shape. And again, this is a lot easier in Illustrator, but we're going to do it in Photoshop. And what we're going to do now is use the ellipse tool and make sure that you don't have a shape layer selected. I mean, you can, but for me, it's easier to just select something that's not a shape because I don't have to worry about adding or subtracting from the shape accidentally. So I'm going to hold shift, click and drag and create a circle about that big. The color really doesn't matter. Just make sure that it's a color that you can see. So I know you can see red, so we'll make it red and click and drag it to this area here, right along the guide and center it around the ring. And what we're going to do now is we're going to make copies of it. that go all the way around this ring. So with that layer selected, I'm going to press Control T, Command T on the Mac to transform, then right click on it and choose Rotate. Then I'm going to hold Alt Option on the Mac, click 
click on that center pivot point and drag that right to the center, right there. Then hover over on top of it, click and drag that while holding shift. And when you get to 90 degrees, release, press enter. Now you're gonna press control, alt, shift, T, command, option, shift, T on the Mac, and press that three times to duplicate it in that same 90 degree angle. And then you're gonna select the top one, hold shift, select the bottom one, so ellipse, then copy, copy two, and copy three, four layers, and press control J and hold shift, click and drag on the corner here to rotate, and then press enter when you have eight evenly placed circles. Now click on the top one, hold shift, click on ellipse one, press control J, command J on the Mac to duplicate, and then control T to transform and rotate that while holding shift. And then you're gonna have something that looks like this. Press enter, press control J, command J on the Mac to duplicate the last set of selected circles, and then press control T to transform, hold shift, and then go the other way one time. So now we have all these circles going around at this point, if you want to get an extra set of circles that are going to go in between these circles, you have to select all of them. So you can either stay where you're at or select the top one, go all the way to the bottom one, hold shift, press control J, command J on the Mac, and then rotate that and sort of eyeball that right about there and press enter. Now you can select all these circles and just simply pressing control E, command E on the Mac to put that into one single layer. This is still a shape layer, so you can leave it as a shape layer if you want to and just change the color or leave it at red, it really doesn't matter because we're gonna copy the layer style here. Hold Alt, click and drag and release. And we're gonna double click on it here to change the bevel to down and the fill opacity to zero. You might actually wanna add a color overlay, maybe black and leave it at maybe 27% just because it'll be a little bit darker in there. You could also come back to into the bevel if you want and adjust the size and shape and how these little holes are gonna look around that ring. I'll leave that up to you. I'm gonna press okay now. Now, one thing I forgot to do on the earlier shape on the outer ring here with the grooves is to bring the fill opacity to zero because I do want some of those colors to come through, but that might be a little too light. So I'm just gonna increase the fill just a little bit, so it's not as light. So maybe at about 25%. I'm gonna click and drag this layer above the inner ring layer, even though that really doesn't make any visual difference. I just wanna have it on top. It just makes more sense that way. So I'm gonna click on this top one, click on the inner ring layer while holding shift, press control G, command G on the Mac to put that into a group and call this inner group. In the lips tool, make sure you have paths selected and we're gonna create the path where our text is gonna lie. So here at the bottom, we're gonna have Photoshop training channel going in the bottom of the coin. So we have to think of where that text is gonna lie. So I'm gonna click and drag while holding shift and alt and think of where the baseline of that text would be. It'll probably be somewhere around here maybe. And I can come into the text tool and I'm gonna use Adobe Castlin Pro. If you don't have that, you can use any other font that you like. Also, I'm gonna capitalize all of the characters. So I'm gonna click and just type in Photoshop training channel. Then with the move tool, I'm gonna to just click and drag that text in here. And I'm using the path selection tool, by the way. So just click and drag that text in, and then you'll see these icons throughout the text the text here. You see that there's one here, that's that's one there. So this is gonna determine where my text is gonna start from. And I want it to start here and go around. And this one, I want it to end here. So this is essentially the start point and end point of the path. So no text is gonna go higher than this point in the beginning and at the end, there's no text gonna go higher. If you had more text or bigger text, uh, let me increase the size, it'll disappear because we can't have any text going past that line that we set there. So I'm gonna bring that back down and adjust it accordingly. And also notice that I have the center align button 
down if I had left the line, it would align to this line here. But I want it centered, so I'm going to click that. And now that I'm looking at this, I think that my text is not going to be centered because there's a lot less space here than it is on the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my path, press Control T, Command T to transform and scale that in. And my text disappears because now I have less space. So what I'm going to do is just double click on here, press Control A, Command A to select all. Even text is not showing. And then just decrease the size of my font here to maybe 72 points. And now it all fits. And let me see if that's more centered. And yeah, I'm still not 100% happy with how centered this is. So I'm going to select my path again, press Control T, this tool here, the path selection tool. Select it, press Control T, Command T to transform and scale that in just a little bit more and press Enter. And now I think my text is more centered than it was before. So that's where I'll leave it. What we're going to do now is type more text on the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the ellipse tool again, make sure I have path, click and drag from the center. But remember that the baseline is going to match the top of the text we had before. And you'll see why in a moment. So just match the top of the text, release, click on the type tool, and you can type something like Photoshop coins, which is what we're creating. So this is the title of the tutorial, Photoshop coins, and then Photoshop training channel, the name of this channel at the bottom. And we're going to click on the path selection tool here and then find these icons that we can move around. So then this one here is going to go right there and actually click and drag it out. Notice that there's three icons, this one here on the left, this one here on the right and the center icon there. So click and drag this one here and and actually they're icons but they're more like handles so think of these as handles the start handle the end handle and the center one there and now we have photoshop coins photoshop training channel here at the bottom and notice that by aligning the path here in the bottom now the text is centered and matches the curvature of the original font because now it's facing up not facing down this is how we had it with the other one obviously that wouldn't work but if it's facing up like so then it matches at this point, I can select both of the text layers by holding shift and clicking on both, pressing control G, command G on the Mac to put that into a group. If you have Photoshop CS6 or newer, then you can add layer styles to a group. If you don't, at this point, you can apply the layer styles to each individual text layer or convert this into a smart object and then apply the layer styles. Since I have Photoshop CC 2015, which is obviously after CS6, I can apply a layer style to a group, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to click on the inner ring here and I'm going to hold Alt Option on the Mac, click on the FX icon and drag it onto this group one, which is actually my text and that's what I'll call it text. So now this group has those layer styles and I can bring down the fill to zero and I can click on the FX icon and adjust that bevel. And you know what? I may bring in just a little bit of that fill up just so the text stands out just a little bit more. You can also decide to add a drop shadow if you want to, but I'm just going to bring the distance way down and the size way down as well and the opacity. So it's just a very faint shadow. Just it barely shows. And I think it does add a little more to the effect and press OK. So now we have the coin, the ornaments of the coin, and the text. The final thing that we're going to do is add the person that's going to go in the center of the coin. And like everything else in Photoshop, there's a lot of ways of doing the same thing or similar things. I'm going to show you a very easy way in case you're a beginner and you don't have to follow all the steps. And then I'm going to show you the more difficult way for advanced users. So I'm going to open up the stock image of a woman and you can use whatever face that you want. It really doesn't matter what face you use and you don't even have to use a face if you don't want to. You can just put in a number or text inside of that circle that we're going to put the face in. But anyway, first, like I said, I'm going to show you the easy way. So I'm just going to duplicate this layer, press Control J, Command J on the Mac. So we have a duplicate of the original, then go to filter, stylize, emboss, and then you can emboss this image until it looks like a uh, coin would. So maybe something like this. Maybe increase the um, amount just a little bit more. Then press OK. 
obviously it has color and we don't want that so you can press Control shift u command shift u on the mac or you can go into image adjustments desaturate shortcuts here shift Control u and we can use this as the face of our coin and that's the easy way now let me show you a way that's a little more difficult but you have a little more control and i like to have control over the effects i create so what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate this original layer and press Control j command j on the mac to duplicate it and i'm going to go into the channels panel and i'm just going to look through all the channels and see what channel gives me the most contrast maybe the blue channel It'll be different channels for different images, so just look through all of them and see what gives you more contrast. You can duplicate that channel by clicking on it and dragging it over into this new channel icon. And we have the blue copy. You can go into Image, Adjustment, and Levels, and adjust your channel to have more contrast. Maybe something, something like this. Press OK. Now this channel has a lot of detail, which is good for photos, but not good for the effect that we're going to create. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blur it, but I'm going to try to create the details and just blur these large areas. So one quick way of doing it is going into filter, blur, surface blur, and Photoshop tries to blur out everything in the large areas here and tries to keep some detail. So you can play around with the threshold and the radius and see what gives you the best results. So maybe eight pixels and threshold of 18 levels for this image if you're using a different photograph then just play around with it until you get something that looks like this the values will be different for almost any photo that you use then press okay now that we have this i can rename this channel to anything i want so i'll just call this channel face coin because it's going to be the face for the coin and i'm going to zoom out and i'm going to go back into the layers panel and I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to fill that layer with 50% gray. The easiest way of doing that is by going into the edit menu, choosing fill and in contents, choose 50% gray and press OK. Now we have a layer with 50% gray. Then go into filter, render, lighting effects. Under lighting effects, there's an option that reads texture and you can select the channel that we created or one of the original ones. So select the one that you created. In my case, it's called face coin and you get that effect there. And you can just select the different types of lighting. So originally I had infinite, there's spot and point. So maybe you can move this here and click and drag on these icons to adjust the effect. So my light is coming from the top left. So maybe I want the top left to have more light and adjust it accordingly. So maybe something like that. And you can adjust the ambience and find something that works for you. I have metallic all the way to 100%. For now, I'm going to leave these settings as they are because I think this will work for me. I know the brightest spot of my image is on this side here so something like this should work for me then i'm going to press ok now that i have this i'm going to make a mask out of it but i'm going to start my mask with the original image so i'm going to click on the quick selection tool increase the size of my brush by tapping on the right bracket key on the keyboard and clicking and dragging throughout her face her neck just to make a selection out of her. And if I made a mistake like I did there, I can hold Alt, Option on the Mac, and subtract that selection. And I can keep adding to it. And it seems like I'm having problems here in the hair, and it's okay. What I can do now is press Q on the keyboard, and with white, I can paint those pixels in. I'm using the quick mask, so I can just paint these in really quickly and it's okay if I go over the line I can paint with black and hide those pixels and I'm going to press Q again to bring back the selection and go back into the image we created there and add a layer mask so now we have this here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this select the move tool click on the layer and drag it over onto this tab. I'm going to hold shift and then release places that in the center. 
I can't see the corner handles, so I'm going to press Control-0, Command-0 on the Mac to go into the bird's eye view. Hold Shift, Alt, click on one of these corner handles and drag down to the appropriate size. So maybe somewhere around here and then press Enter. And I'm going to zoom in. Then we need to create the mask. So I'm going to click on the elliptical marquee tool, click on the center here, hold Alt, Shift, and try to match that inner circle as best as possible. So maybe here and add a new group. This group is going to be called person because that's the person on the coin and add the layer mask to that group. Then you can click on the person layer. I'll call this one woman just so we can have a different name and click and drag it into that group. And now it hides the rest of the layer that was overlapping the rest of the coin. And the advantage of having the mask in the group is that we can click and drag her around accordingly. So maybe you don't want her in the center. Maybe you want her here in the side somewhere or anywhere that you want. For this tutorial, I'll leave her in the center here. And I'm using the arrow keys on the keyboard to center her a little bit better. Then I'm going to change the blend mode to luminosity. And if your luminance values are either too bright, too dark, you can adjust them by creating an adjustment layer, selecting levels, clicking on this icon here, which turns it into a clipping mask. This down pointing arrow indicates that you're only affecting the layer below it. In this case, the woman layer, and you can adjust the luminance values and make them match the color of your coin or the gray tones of your coin. So this is how you would get it to match the coin more accurately. So maybe something like this. At this point, we can start adding the color of our coin. Right now we have a silver coin, but maybe you want to have a gold coin. The way you would go about that is by creating a new adjustment layer and clicking on hue and saturation, colorize, and make sure that you're using the color blend mode because we're going to use this layer just for color. So I can actually rename this layer and call it color. And maybe you want to make this into a gold coin. So I'll, I can select a golden color, something like this, increase the saturation, bring down the lightness. I can delete the layer mask. And then with the main shape, I can control command click on the thumbnail. And then on the adjustment layer for color, click on the layer mask. And now it applies only to the coin. If you want to control the luminance values of the entire coin at the same time, just create a new levels adjustment layer, change the blend mode to luminosity. And I'm actually going to delete the layer mask. Click on this layer mask, hold Alt Option on the Mac, click and drag it, and you duplicate it. So now all the effects that I apply will only affect the coin. So I can come in here and just make the coin brighter or darker in different areas. I think we're okay, so I don't need to make any adjustments. I just wanted to show you that option. And by the way, you can also use a curves adjustment layer. This time I'm just going to control click on the layer mask thumbnail to make a selection, then go into curves, set that to luminosity and use curves. If you're familiar with curves, I personally would probably use curves instead of levels just because I prefer it. But if you're not familiar with curves, levels will also help you out. So levels are curves, whatever you want to do. I'm going to delete the levels layer in my case, and I'm just going to call this luminance because this is taking care of my luminance values and you can make adjustments to that as well. I'm actually going to just come into my luminance here and delete all those points and just click and drag and bring this one down. I think my coin was just a little too bright, so maybe something like this. So it's still bright, but not as bright as it was before. Then I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to click on the brush tool. I'm going to select a soft brush, something like this. Make sure that hardness is at 0% with the right bracket key on the keyboard. I'm going to Tap that a few times until I have a large brush like so. Click right in the center. And actually I had black, but that's okay. I can press Control I, Command I on the Mac to invert it to white. With that white brush stroke, I can switch the blend mode to a linear dodge add. Nothing will happen. It'll look exactly the same. But if you double click on the side of the layer here in the layer style window and uncheck transparency shapes layer, notice what happens. It looks brighter, hotter, 
and that's what we want. It looks more metallic. So I'm going to press OK. Now with the Move tool, I can place that anywhere I want to, and I want it right about here. And there's several blend modes that look different when you bring down the opacity and the fill. This is one of those blend modes. So if I bring the fill down to 50%, check out how that looks. And actually, just so you can see, I'm going to go into the History panel, create a snapshot. Snapshot number one is opacity of 50%. Let me bring the opacity back up to 100% and the fill to 50. Create another snapshot. So this is what it looks like with fill at 50% and this is what it looks like with opacity at 50%. See the difference? The second one still looks hotter and brighter and that's what we want to do. We want to use the fill to adjust the brightness of this highlight. So in my case, 31% looks good. I'm going to duplicate this layer mask. So I'm going to hold Alt option on the Mac, click and drag it onto this highlight. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to paint with white and I'm just going to shape that into a highlight and put that right up here. So it's really bright. And I'm also going to remove this checkbox here. So it's just a little hotter. Probably no real difference is pretty small. So just place that into position and maybe use the smudge tool and smudge the edges in a little bit. And that's our highlight. And I can also use the fill to adjust it. So now we have these highlights. So I'm going to select both of those layers, put them into a group, control G, command G in the Mac, call it high light. And now we have our highlight in our coin. And I'm actually looking at the coin now, and I forgot to add one thing that's actually really not that important. But if I wanted to add it, it's not difficult. On the, in the text group, I can add ornaments here on the coin. So I can go into the custom shape tool, for example. And if I select all and click OK, I can see all of my shapes. And there's different shapes that I can use to add ornaments to this coin. So maybe like this one here, for example. And make sure that you have shape. And I can come and add something that looks like this. And since I'm inside of this group, it'll take that bevel effect because it's applying it to everything inside of that group. So with that select that I can hold Alt option on the Mac, click and drag to duplicate it and place it on the other side. So you can add all kinds of ornaments and things like that to your coin, anything that you find useful. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something new. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video with a friend. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.